focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Fortinet presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV18. Hello and welcome to Fortinet presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV18. I'm your host Gautam Srinivasan and our topic of discussion today is the core priorities for financial institutions, trust, security and resilience. And sharing their thoughts on balancing digital transformation with risk to become future ready from a financial sector perspective are Dr. Saurav Datta, Executive Director IT at IDBI Bank. Anupreeta Daga, Chief Information Security Officer at Yes Bank, and Vishak Raman, Vice President of Sales for India, SARC, and Southeast Asia at Fortinet. Thank you everyone for joining in and looking forward to understanding more about how this balancing act progresses when it comes to risk and innovation for financial institutions. But Vishak, let's start with the broad strokes because digital transformation has accelerated at a very rapid pace for uh, financial institutions and therein the question of risk comes in. How do you manage risk? But I also want to understand from you at first, when we look at all these customer-centric initiatives and a lot of services and projects being launched, where should the security journey begin in your opinion? The way I see it, uh, Gautam, is first to look at security as an enabler for your digital transformation. Look at security as a business enabler to reach out to your customers, new value proposition back to your customers, and look at how you can bring in more data from an intelligence point of view and secure it properly. So I see it security as a foundation one where it, it enables your digital acceleration much faster. Mm. Right? Not something which you roll out a product or a service and then you look at security after math. Mm. So it has to be designed from grounds up and security by design rather than something which is you bolted it on after you launch a product or service. All right, let's expand the conversation to get in more use cases and thoughts coming in from IDBI and Yes Bank, two leading banks in the country. So Dr. Datta, we'll start with you on this question of how can financial services organization lead and win through innovation while not getting overwhelmed by the sheer amount of risks which come in when you go into expansion and innovation. And this has been a traditionally risk averse industry. So your thoughts on that first from an IDBI perspective. So from a banking industry perspective, uh, security is now an integral part of it. Like you mentioned, it was in earlier days, it was kind of a bolted on thing. In fact, if you look at the technologies also, the IP technology, IPv4, was also something which didn't have security in, in its beginning, right? It was always a bolted on thing, which came on later on. So similarly for the banks, which are relying now on technology, so banks, you know now is, uh, is kind of a tech company with a banking license, right? Yeah. So we see that and going forward, it will be more so where the, uh, the IT or the information technology departments would be leading the business and how to go forward, right? So having that in mind, uh, the security aspect uh, from a banking perspective is that it has to be something which is absolutely ground up. So all the new technologies which are getting embedded into the system, uh, the overall architecture, it has to be made secure mm. from day one, mm. right? And we need to see that what are the bells and whistles can come in later on, but the basic MVP, the minimum viable product is absolutely, absolutely secure. So that's how the banking industry should go forward, according to me. All right, if we had to take a construction analogy, security is those steel girders which make sure that the building stands, can withstand a whole amount of uh, disruption. So to then speaking of disruptions, Anupreeta, I mean, when we look at the job profile that all of you do, you are supposed to make sure that your organizations are resilient, they can withstand, they can survive, and they can recover and the threat surface just keeps expanding especially as customer centricity involves new business models new touch points coming up and when we look at employees we also want to make sure that they can work from anywhere keeping all of this in mind again the question to you and how can financial services organizations sort of lead and win this innovation game while taking care of risks effectively and not getting overwhelmed by it so if, if we see the overall, everybody talks about security by design, but uh, I, I think it's an evolution, the way technology is being evolved, I, even security is also being evolved. And security as of now is, I mean, maybe not today, but maybe five years before, it was considered to be a technology problem. Mm -hmm. 
while security need to be considered as a business problem because if as we are talking about the customer trust right from defining the product and from technology perspective when we talk about resilient even from customer perspective if we have to have innovative product we also need to consider people process and technology so people level security is a lot of other things which happen process level things also we try to put down and technology is what there's a huge focus on the technology side but this process part which is the business mm -hmm. and what we see like when when we do the card payment transaction you know if there is any fraudulent transaction we, which we quickly get the get the alert we quickly get the call saying that okay is this the legit transaction mm -hmm. so this what we talk about security design and security shift left that security shift left should go up to a business product design level and when you talk about the business product which is implemented by technology and then you have reconciliation real time monitoring from technology perspective from customer transaction fraudulent transaction perspective that end to end stitching dots if we do it we will reduce the threat landscape and we cannot we can never say that it's 100% but definitely we can reduce the threat landscape absolutely security as part of the fabric of the corporate tapestry yeah. you could yeah. state all right coming back to the theme of the episode which is around trust security and resilience the three key pillars when we look at it vishak i want to get your broader perspective and i'll get dr datta in to respond in from an idbi bank perspective when we look at these three pillars in addition to the lens of people process and technology which anupriya stated these are meant how do how do you see these driving growth from a broad perspective uh, when the thinking in the c suite comes how do you see driving broad business growth in a, for the from a financial sector perspective from a banking as a service perspective and also from a partnerships perspective because we are in a sort of an open api world where banks have strategically looked at partnerships to maybe you know uh, look at addressing the gaps in certain areas so they want that flexibility so trust security and resilience in service of all these objectives give us the broad perspective yeah so if you look at it um, the trust what a bank establish gets the customer access a lot more better right and i think that's foundational but security when you really look at it can be an enabler the current environment today when you really look at reduction of cost there's a pressure back on the bank and when you really look at the automation and the innovation what they need to come out with customer experience channel mm. right the way the tools are being built to reach out customers is phenomenal right and the third part what he said about opening up a newer channel to industry groups mm. right making sure that uh, how you partner how you interoperable with looking at open banking to your client mm. where by the client gets more out of the bank right and the second part which looks at broadening your horizon whereby you open it up to a community and an ecosystem mm. right so today every bank is api layered how they want to interconnect uh, with with their uh, fintech partners with with the, with the fintech uh, interbanking uh, uh, you know functionalities right so i think the more amount of openness it always call for security dr datta your perspective on this on 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 security as a sort of a business growth driver resilience as a business growth driver and trust as a business growth driver yeah so uh, ensuring that we have the customer trust always mm -hmm. that is of a prime importance to any banking uh, industry right and uh, security of course is the second level in which for example if you are doing a, a, a mobile transaction or internet banking transactions whether you want to secure that with a multi factor authentication which is two level three level four level or just one level for example just otp mm -hmm. some some banks have got otp plus a transactional password so you need to have a balance between a security and the the ease of operations from a customer perspective so that is a trust piece and the customer also needs to be uh, sure that the transactions that he or she is making is secure now comes the resiliency piece of it so resiliency piece is that uh, if something goes down somewhere right so how do you gracefully uh, have those services up and running and security is one of the major area right and then then balancing these is something of prime importance you know <laughs> so how do you trade off not uh, upset the customer if i may put that way right mm. so and at the same time keep the confidence and increase the business so for a security perspective uh, it's never i mean you get a kind it's of a never ending never journey. ending thing and your and the weakest link the the worst part is the weakest link is the human 
All right. right. That's a great point. That, that, at the end of the day, needs to be a key factor. How do you address the human element? Uh, but Anupreet, I want you to expand on some of the talking points which uh, Dr. Datta said, because while there is accelerated digital transformation, we also have to remember there are highly stringent compliance requirements. And I want to get your perspective on how you are rethinking, say, data privacy strategies, data protection strategies, to make sure that you stay ahead of the curve and also address the human element, because technology might be flawless, but at the end of the day, it's the humans who are using the technology. True, true. What is important is that this preventive mechanism is, is an old story now. Right? We need to have the mechanism to have a detection, the, the better way of detection. We need to have a mechanism of finding out, okay, what's going wrong? You know, these are the new threats, whether these are new threats through technology, through, through zero day or through people related or maybe fraudulent transaction happening. So there are various you know, scenarios which, which comes as a part of banking. And business also has to think about it, what I need to monitor. And people perspective, it's very, very important that you have uh, technology which understands what is the behavioral pattern, what is the unusual behavior. And you need to also have automation that when we look at it that there's something unusual happening, how quickly we are able to isolate that machine or you know uh, reduce the access of a, of, a, of an individual or even the system level. so how do you contain the risk and how do you quickly respond to it is very very important mm -hmm. yeah. Shaka, a quick response from you before we go into a break see the way i look at it so it starts with the baselining of compliance starts with securing your hybrid networks securing your hybrid clouds securing your hybrid workplace which is including your people, and then comes the big gap, which is your skill sets. Mm. How do you make sure that the people are cyber aware and uh, they are well trained uh, both on-premise and as well as off-network? And how do you adopt basic principles like zero trust network access mm. in a banking situation, right? And I think it's a journey. And when you really look at it, how the banks are actually proceeding, uh, they're doing a great job. And what an interesting journey it is. And of course, with everything as a service coming forth, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that journey kind of takes unintended directions, but at the end of the day, you arrive at your destination of growth. So, all right, let's dive right back into the conversation because in the previous segment, we discuss how these journeys are evolving. And I want to extend that conversation to new business models, new services that it's bringing forth to your customers because we are truly in the era of customer centricity. And when you do security, trust and resilience right, I want to understand how does that open new horizons for all of you? So yes, bank, the example that I'll expect from you, Anupreeta, and IDBA. So we'll start with yours. So uh, trust is always on the center, right? And the core is, and we are in the financial industry. We obviously, uh, we take care of customer money. And mm. without trust, whether this is related to privacy, this is related to the transactional uh, monitoring or payment, digital payments, I think trust has to be at the, at the very, very core core part of it. Now, and, and again, the way the technology is evolving, you know, it's very, very important that prevention is no more uh, a tool for the security. Uh, because if we do not have innovation, if we do not adopt the new technology, obviously our business is not going to be, uh, you know, I mean, the basic last three, four years, five years, what we are saying is that digital is the basic foundation of, of the business now. Mm. Now, in this case, how do we how are we agile in detect detecting the threats? How are we agile in finding out what exactly is going wrong? Whether it is internal, external, what is the threat attack surface? What is happening with, with other banks or uh, other uh, geography? Mm. So there are multiple things which are there and it's time to detection using AI and time to reduction through automation is very, very important. Dr. Datta, from your perspective, all these developments which have happened, whether it's automation, uh, whether it's customer centricity being thought in a different way by financial services institutions, the new business services, new business models that it has enabled for IDBI Bank. Sure. So uh, from a customer sense, centricity, it is uh, that it has always been there, right? Mm. And with the new digital uh, enablement coming in, there's been more focus on the customer centricity point of view now. Um, from a new product perspective, right? So uh, from products, all products are going to be digital, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the products, the traditional products are already there. And the new products which are coming in, uh, whether it's in a lending domain, 
whether it's in uh, uh, new areas, for example, from a government-sponsored uh, uh, journeys for the Kisan credit cards, etc. Mm. Right. So these kind of new products which are coming in, which has got a whole gamut of integration into different, uh, uh, different, uh, if I call different applications or services, which are given by government and as well as from third party. Mm. So these kind of new services require a big uh, initiative in terms of maintaining the customer centricity and the, the key elements, like you mentioned, the trust, security, and the resilience, right? You're getting information from multiple domain, how to maintain the privacy, the secrecy of this data, and use it uh, in a way that is uh, for that product or for that services only, and then, uh, I mean, keep it aside. Don't keep it within your system. So that is number one. Second is from a, from a new product uh, journey development itself. Like I mentioned that uh, the new things which are coming in, for example, uh, every, from an automation perspective, we are looking at things uh, where everybody's talking about AI, right? Mm -hmm. Having said that, what is happening, AI is basically an optimization uh, technology techniques with various models you can use and you have various weightages which will come to a particular, uh, it gives you a particular solution. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a kind of a fitting, right? So whether you overfit or underfit, so you have the false positives and all of that mm -hmm. in AI. Just because of that, because it's overfitting mm -hmm. or underfitting. So uh, having said that, what is happening is that in the automation piece, where you're trying to manage your various network endpoints, you're having so much of uh, data coming in from outside, people are accessing your systems from various sites. So how do you manage all of this data coming? It's not humanly possible. So that's why the automation comes in, and that's where the AI comes in, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to use in a selective way where you can use AI. So this is where that we see that AI is going to help in time and kind of getting unified information on a single plane where many things are happening, there are various moving parts and networks in the IPS, in your firewall, in your load balancers, all of those things are happening, right? So mm. all of these comes together. And then you can couple this with an optimization techniques which is supported by AI and the new uh, compute capacity that we have is supporting mm. AI. So wow. we have to uh, take it in a in a It's a balanced. continuous optimization correct, journey, correct. You, could, you could put it at. And that's a great point that you mentioned because it generates a single source of truth for stakeholders. And I want to flip that script also from a security standpoint because that's the need of the air. Everyone wants a simple, easy, accessible, comprehensive single source of truth. Coming out from AI and considering it's a continuous optimization journey, Vishak, the need for single mesh platform for financial institution, how acute is it right now? When you really look at the convergence, of what's actually happening. The traditional MPLS circuits in a bank is actually going out of the way. Mm -hmm. Because of the application aware networks are getting built, that's where we are seeing this convergence of security and uh, wide area networks. We call it a secure SD-WAN, mm -hmm. which, is, which is software defined. So that's the convergence what we're seeing. The second piece is the consolidation part of it. Because today the network is expanded into cloud, uh, your user, your application, and uh, your data is all over the all over all over these four important pillars, right? So, how do you get visibility? How do you make sure that you get a common dashboard or framework of where the uh, where where the attack surface is actually expanded, mm. right? So, you need to gain better visibility across. So, the fabric approach has got four fundamental important point. Right, the first one you need to have an operational dashboard across these pillars of assets. Second, you need to have threat intelligence coming in from outside and view of inside, right? So that's a, that's a fabric's uh, important point of getting threat intelligence back into your um, fabric mesh. Third is your identity, right? And how do you make sure your identity, which is actually traveling across your network, your application, your user, and in his device is the right person to access? Zero trust in a true sense. Right, correct. So your identity aware uh, fabric is so important. The last, which is very, very important, is your policy. When you enforce a policy in your network, how does your cloud, how does your endpoint, how does your application have the same ubiquitous policy mm -hmm. and posture management? Mm -hmm. So coming back, it's your centralized operational dashboard, your threat intelligence, your feeds of your identity mm -hmm. across your attack surface, and the last, not but the least, but your policy management and posture. This is what a common fabric approach mm. with zero trust 
principles gives you a, a better security control. All right, let's distill all the talking points that we have discussed so far into summary statements because when we look at, say, customer trust, business acceleration, compliance and security, I want to know from you as your summary statement, where should be the focus be for so the benefit of our viewers and why. So maybe Anuprita will start with you and then Dr. Datta and the last word from Vishal. So, uh, see, right now what we are talking, what we are thinking earlier, if we see that it was a very technology. So this, this was a technology problem and now we are talking security as the business problem. Mm. But the soon that the transformation will be or the shift will be that how do we make a security as a consumer centric? Now, when we are making it as a consumer centric, even if, because today we talk about, you know, do not share identity, do not share OTP, I mean, whatever, you know, there are so many phishing campaigns happen. So the shift will become like a consumer centric mm. and consumer whatever. So the kind of services what we'll have to provide that we will have to ensure that, you know, consumer is, is really protected. So that will become a responsibility of a regulated entity to provide that, those, because the technology if we are providing will have to also put a security around it. So that is one thing what will really come up and the, there are some level of discussion which has started. Third thing is like, okay, because as of now, the IOTs have just started like Alexa and all, what we use is only for the cosmetics, like, okay, switch on the light and all of the things. Mm. But then in, in uh, the, the- If you focus world, on customer centricity, the answers will present themselves. That's your- Present point. will themselves. And then there will be a lot of integration now we are talking about third party, but there'll be a lot of integration which will be happening through I IOD devices. So there'll be a new threat which might be coming in, but we'll have to continuously keep on evolving. <laughs> keep updating. But digital is always going to be the core. Security is always going to be the core. More we evolve, the, the less what we reduce the all right. landscape. Uh, a quick view from you, Dr. Datta. So I think the, all the three points are of uh, prime importance. You know, customer trust, security, and compliance, right? Mm. So customer trust is something which is core to any of the industry, right? And banking industry is number one for that. So customer trust will definitely uh, has to be kept in the center. Mm. And then you have security, which has to be wrapped around. Right? So security framework has to be wrapped around and then compliance is something, I mean, if you don't do, if you have a business without compliance, then it's not a business, right? Mm -hmm. So the compliance is definitely one of the key factors which will make uh, the, the, the basic rigor of a business a sturdy one and then you conform to all the regulations of the country of the land. It's all wrapped together. All right. Vishak, the last word from you. Yeah, I think, you know, it's all application driven, right? So you got to look at your security framework across your networks, starts with network starts with your application from design, your user, your endpoint, but you got to tie this together with a common framework mm. whereby you will be able to gain better visibility and control. And uh, finance industry is a service industry out there, right? You're going to service much larger ecosystems. So the more the better transactions, better security transactions, the better for the business per se. So security is foundation. Mm. It's going to accelerate the, the digital transformation, what the banks are actually going through. And you need security as the proper foundation, especially as we enter this brave new world of opportunities that are coming about both for customers and for financial institutions. On that note, it's time to conclude this episode of Fortinet Presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV 18. I'd like to thank all of our panelists for joining in and of course, sharing their perspectives and thoughts on the topic. And of course, thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Till next time, this is your host Gautam Srinivasan signing off. Have a great day. Fortinet presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV 18. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.